I'm Rob and today we're at the Cowherds in Southampton. This is the Cowherds pub on Southampton Common. This building's an 18th century building. It was built in 1762 on the site of the old Cowherds cottage. Uh, when it was built in 1762 it remained a home for the Cowherd but they also granted him a license to uh, sell beer and spirits. In 1857 it changed its name to the Southampton Arms, but it only changed its name for 14 years before it reverted back to the Cowherds, and that's what it's been ever since. Now Cowherd um, was a chap that was paid on the common land to look after the cattle and the fences and the gates and such things, uh, and he was paid a, a few pence per animal. Um, as time went on his job got a bit harder uh, because they restricted it to uh, just two cattle per commoner so it was difficult to make a living so probably that's why he went for the, uh, the license to sell out. From the pub we're going to walk towards Southampton along this footpath. When we reach the Blue Gate we're going to turn right to follow along the southern edge of the common. Pretty soon on the left we come across the Hawthorns Urban Wildlife Centre. It's not open yet, or I'll take you in. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. So a bit of a history for this part of the common. Um, it was a brickmaker's for a long time, and there was a brickmaker's cottage there. Then in 1814 that was demolished, and Hawthorne Cottage was built on the site. Uh, it then became a tree nursery. And then between 1961 and 1985, it became a zoo. Uh, the problem with the zoo was it's only one and a quarter acres, and they had elephants and tigers and all sorts there. And so during the early 80s, there were protests, and that sadly saw it close down. But uh, since then, the band of volunteers for Southampton Council have been uh, busy educating people about urban wildlife here. The common is a real asset to the city of Southampton. It's got one acre of ground for every day of the year. It's 365 acres. So it's a, a massive piece of countryside with woodland, grassland, ponds. Um, it's first recorded in the 13th century in a land dispute, but there is evidence to show that it was probably a common during Anglo-Saxon times when Southampton was known as Hamwick. That's about 500 AD. At this little junction of paths, we're going to turn left on this gravel entrance here and then walk alongside the, the fairground, which isn't normally there here. Um, Southampton Common is home for years and years of uh, fairgrounds. Uh, there used to be a Southampton show, balloon festival, power in the park. Saw Gary Barlow there once, I think I was the only one left in the crowd after they uh, split tape that up. He wasn't very popular then. <laughs> Felt sorry for him. <laughs> anyway, we stayed and watched him. Yeah, so um, there's always something going on on the common, and it's the Easter Fair today, but we're going to walk down here towards the Southampton Old Cemetery. The cemetery lake is over to the right, but we're going to cut through this little cut through onto the path that takes us onto Cemetery Lane. We exit the common temporarily at the Cemetery Lake entrance. As you can see, a lot of the common is a triple SI. Uh, things like crested newts and all sorts of invertebrates and insects and other things that uh, are protected on here. And we're turning right into Cemetery Lane. So the bluebells are nicely out now. And we continue to walk alongside the cemetery. This is the entrance to Southampton Old Cemetery. Now virtually all of the buildings and some of the memorials and some of the walls are Grade 2 listed. Uh, there's 117,000 bodies in the cemetery. Uh, generally speaking there aren't any burials these days apart from a few into existing family graves. They number about seven or eight a year something of that order. 
The cemetery was opened in 1846 and uh, it doesn't matter what denomination you are, there's a place for you in this cemetery. Uh, there are obviously people from the Church of England, there are Jews, Catholics, there's even dissenters in here. So we've got a lovely chat with us that's showing us around the different places we want to go in the cemetery. Um, that's the Jewish chapel there. And then the one that I filmed a minute ago, that's the C of E chapel. And this one is for the dissenters and non-conformists. This grave, one of many, many grand graves in the graveyard, is uh, the grave for the Moon family. Now you notice there's a wooden propeller down there, that comes from a flying boat. And it's actually the propeller from the flying boat in which Edwin Moon, aviation pioneer, was killed in, in April 1920. Uh, Edwin Moon, known to a lot of Eastley people, for the, uh, the Moonbeam 2, which was an early aircraft, and the first aircraft to take off from Eastley Airport, now Southampton International. Of course then it was uh, North Stone and Farm and that was in 1910. Edwin had gone on to become a, uh, a flying boat instructor with the Royal Flying Corps. And as I say, uh, that's how he was killed when his uh, flying boat crashed into the sea. And that was the 29th of April 1920. So I'm with Val Ferguson. And she's the secretary of the Friends of Southampton Old Cemetery. Hello, Val. Oh, good morning. <laughs> um, I noticed this grave here has got a, a blue marker on. Um, what does that mean? All blue markers are associated with the Titanic. Now, it, it could be, as I just said, an association with the Titanic, but it's not the mayor of Southampton at the time. Or they could be the victims. But there will probably be victims that are not buried here. Right. None of the victims. I read about, about yeah. 60 memorials with no bodies, yes, yeah? That, well, they're, they're, yes, it is about that now. And we've also got those that survived. Mm -hmm. Now, those that are victims usually do state on the actual headstone, lost at sea in the SS Titanic. Oh, right. Uh, of course, those that have, have died later, that won't be on there. Yeah. But we know that they are have been on there. This one we're looking at now is Henry Price Hodges. Now, Henry Price Hodges was um, he owned a musician shop and it would have been where Yates Bar is in town. Right, okay. And he also used to like to use what I think is a Jack Russell, but I don't think that's what they're called. But if you can remember HMV, yeah, Nipper. His, ma Nipper, his master's voice, he had about four of them in, in his shop. Ah. There is a picture, it's a bit faded, of all the gramophones, and there's these dogs all lying around, and they are that dog. So he did kind of use that as well. Um, he was in, on, on, as I say, the Titanic, um, and he was going to meet his brother over in, I think it was Boston, but I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, he was our one and only second class passenger. Oh, right. So Val has shown us another gravestone, and this is for Lieutenant Colonel William Hewitt. And as it says on the gravestone, he's the last surviving English officer that took part in the Battle of Waterloo. That's quite a, a prominent headstone. There's so much history in this cemetery. So I believe this is a, a Titanic survivor here then, Val. Yes, this is um, Horace Ross. Now he was what you class as a scullion, which meant that he did all the odd jobs that he did doing, probably down in the engine room and places like that. Um, we know he survived because what they did was they would put a list on the, the railings which was outside Cunard House, and you'd have two listings, one which was said they knew had died, and one that they knew had survived. And on that list is Ross. Now, this would have been a couple of days after the Titanic had sunk, because it did take a few days for, for the notices and such like to come through. Yep. But as I said, his name was on it, and we know he survived. It was his very first ship, and believe it or not, he carried on sailing. Really? Yeah. 
You'd have thought he'd have run a million miles, wouldn't no, you? No, he did. He's, he's, he carried on sailing. Yeah? So this is the last Titanic grave that Val's going to show us today because there are over 60, some of them with bodies, some of them without. And uh, what's the story with this one? Who's in here then, Val? This is Harry Smithers. And Harry Smithers was, now I'm trying to do this by memory, I think he was a stoker. He was only 21, he'd not been long married, his wife was about 17 or 18, and they had a little girl called Louisa. Now the thing with this grave is, is that there are errors on it. Now at the top here, because of the way we look at things, you think, oh, that's Louisa, but it's actually Lousia. Ah. It's a spelling mistake, and I think they have got the date different. I think they've actually got the date of the 14th, where most people would say it was the 15th. Right. But, um, as I said, Harry was, was um, uh, a stoker. Now, a stoker would do four hours on, four hours off. Now, you've got to remember, or if you've ever seen anything of the boilers on the Titanic, they will join all of us. Absolutely join all Yeah. And I think there was over 28 of them. I can't remember. That's offhand. Um, so he would be doing the coal in. So it would be hot. He would literally be in his vest and pants. It would be so hot. He would be so dirty as well. And he would be deaf because of the noise. So within the four hours he had off, it would take at least an hour for him to get his hearing back. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the easiest of jobs to do as well. As I said, unfortunately, he did not survive. Uh, his wife did remarry and have more children, I believe. Um, but the young, well, who's buried in here is his parents, which are Harry and Louisa, ah. which they spell Louisa yep. as lousier. Ah. And I'm afraid this is vandalism. That's terrible. Pure and unadulterated vandalism. But um, yeah, which is, which is a shame. Terrible. Thanks Val, it's been really really interesting and there's more here to see than, than we've got time to see um, but is this open to, to the public? Are there any tours or anything like that? Yes, the cemetery is open 24-7 unfortunately it doesn't look and yes, the friends do have walks we started our walks and we always start our walks with the Titanic one and those were on the 9th and the 10th this year because of Easter for mm -hmm. the following weekend but we do have one every month. Next one is Are You Being Served? Ah. Which is obviously about people either in service or owning shops and that. And it should be a very good walk. And that's on the 15th of May. Ah. And then we continue after that uh, every month, except August, because we think it's too hot to be in here. <laughs> and there's not much shade. Right. But our walks are free, but we do recommend a donation because literally everything we do we are surviving of course, on donations. Of volunteers. And we're volunteers, yeah. we don't get paid. Absolutely. And we do it for the love of the, the, of the cemetery, yep. which is absolutely beautiful. And moment. you have a website with all this information Yes, we on? do. It's on FOSOC, F -O -S -O -C, mm -hmm. which is our initials, yep. dot .org, and you'll find it on there under events. Well, that's lovely. I hope more people come and pay a visit. There's an awful lot of history in this oh, cemetery, isn't thank there? You, thank you so much as well. That's thank you. Of you. Cheers, Val. Bye. That was really interesting and we're going to follow this path which leads us out onto the common. Uh, but before we do, just over here, I've got to remember in the World Wars there were more than one nation fighting obviously and lots of the Allies came from different countries and this is the memorial to the Belgians that died in the First World War, most of them at Netley at the military hospital. And here are the war graves. Um, some have had recent visitors and there are pictures. As Val was saying, all the blue marker posts are Titanic survivors or uh, Titanic memorials to people that were drowned, never found. Uh, this is probably one, there's probably nobody in here, George Henry Chitty. As he uh, died on the foundering Titanic, 
as it says. There's another one over there in the, the grass. You can't underestimate the big, big deal this was for Southampton when the Titanic went down. And the Titanic Museum's worth a visit as well, and there's a map plotting where all the crew came from. Ah, this is a great place to come and feed the ducks. It's normally teeming with them. Not so many today, I don't know where they've all gone. A lot of seagulls. Even more pigeons. But there are normally loads and loads of ducks. And this is the cemetery pond. We're going to head back on the path and skirt the common. So as a matter of interest, there were several reservoirs on the common at one time, um, from the Danboff local streams. I think water was even pumped up from Mansbridge at one time. I think it still is. Um, all the sort of up above ground reservoirs have gone and we're just left with ponds. Um, but the underground reservoir up on the northeastern side of the common is still there and uh, that holds 33,000 litres of water. At the back of the cemetery pond we're turning right to follow this little path through the undergrowth. So whether this ancient brickwork is uh, to do with the diversion of these streams, I don't know. Uh, opened up in 1844 as a public park, so it sort of went from being cows and commoners gathering wood for fuel and berries for food and so on and so on and so on, and became a public park. Uh, there are several race courses on the common, or well, there were. At this point, I think we'll take this path to the right and go back out onto the open common again to skirt the fair the other side. So some gorse and we're going to go to the cemetery pond fence and turn left. Then we're going to make our way around the fair, to the left, to head towards the ornamental ponds. That's Hill Lane over there and that's the Balmore Tavern. And that is another, another good option to start the walk if you don't fancy the cow herds. Anyway. We're turning right at this junction of paths to head off where that buggy's coming down. As I was saying, this, uh, this is a great site for nature. Look at some of these magnificent trees. Southampton is very, very lucky to have this common. They're not very common, <laughs> not very common common outside of London and the, the bigger cities. Yeah, Southampton does well for green space. And just here's the ornamental lake, and we're going to take this path to the right, just to skirt along the side of it. We continue across the wooden footbridge. 
there at the junction. There's a woodpecker there. And we're taking the path to the left, back towards Hill Lane. And then we're going to circle around the top of the common to the reservoir. And instead of going straight on towards Hill Lane, we're going to take this right-hand path through the woods. So just here we are going to turn right. And of course students love it here on Southampton Common for just chilling out. And here we are, this is the one remaining functioning reservoir on the Common. That's the one that holds 33,000 litres and it's buried underground under this, uh, this raised bank. Rather than go near the, the busy avenue, we'll backtrack a little bit on ourselves. Walk back around the reservoir and then we'll make a left. We're going back to this crossroads and we're going to turn left, but we're going to cut across the grass here to join the path over there. Well, if you've lost your best cap up the tree on the common, then that's where it is. So the commons, as I said, has got a lot of history and a lot of uses. There was a cholera hospital here once, literally for about a day. <laughs> the, uh, the city thought, no, it's, uh, it's, it's not quite right. So they purchased the city of Adelaide, which was a, a passenger liner. And they used that as a hospital ship instead and closed down the hospital. Uh, World War One and Two. It was a rest and transit camp for uh, troops going off to D-Day and so on, and coming back from Dunkirk. There was also a POW camp on the Common. Uh, camp C-18 is called uh, Squatters Camp. That was used until 1953 when the housing department took it over to house the, uh, the homeless from the bombing in Southampton. And Camp C-19, that didn't close until 1970 and was part of the uh, Education Authority's buildings. So, uh, yeah, an awful lot to see and learn on the common. Anyway, we're going to head back past the last remaining pond in this direction. I'll show you the children's play park, a very nice cafe, and finish the walk. There used to be a lovely paddling pool over there with a, a big fountain in the middle, but that's all been dug up now, and a children's play park's been put there. Uh, Sometimes you say, oh, it's not the same as it was, but in actual fact, I think I prefer the children's play park. I take my grandkids over there quite a bit, and it's, it's great. And there's a nice cafe there where we're going to have something to eat as well. Uh, we sign off at the cow herds, but uh, a bit impossible really to do a, a pub visit. They've uh, said that I can't film inside, and yeah, so I think I'd rather go to the cafe. That was a really interesting walk, very historic right. Southampton Common, lots to see and do on it. The cemetery's a, a must and, and the tour is very good. You can go there free, just with donations for the cemetery group. Recommend that. It's been four miles. Starting to feel quite thirsty and quite hungry now. Um, we're not going in the pub as I said, we can't film in there, so there's not a lot of point. So we're gonna go over to the cafe. We're going to have a look and see what their tea, coffee and uh, uh, lunches are like over there. Anyway, if you like the walk, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. But until then, over to the cafe. Here we are. We've ended up in the play park at the kiosk on the common. We've been told it's very nice coffee and good food. So we're going to try a bit of that. 
so as I say, it's a lovely play park, great place to bring the kids and a great place to go for a walk. Anyway, let's have our food. So how was your bacon roll and oh, your what? coffee, Trev? So-so. Uh, so-so? I didn't expect a culinary masterpiece and it wasn't. <laughs> but tasty though, I enjoyed mine. Mm -hmm.